Hello again. Having spent five segments discussing 1975 fiasco, we're moving now to a related issue. This generation, after the disappointment in 1975-76, the governing body did spend some time not just on what had happened in respect to the chronology of 1975, but what about the very much more emphasized chronology related to 1914 and the last generation? So this is, this is how Ray Franz takes up the discussion. He first quotes from Isaiah chapter 28, verse 20, where it says, For the couch has proved too short for stretching oneself on, and the woven sheet itself is too narrow when wrapping oneself up. Ray goes on, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses feels a fair degree of discomfort as regards what remains of, as the organization's major time prophecy. The time frame allotted for its fulfillment is proving quite short and narrow as to covering the things foretold. The passing of each year only serves to accentuate the discomfort felt. And of course he wrote this in 1983. 1914, for more than three decades, the terminal point for the organization's time prophecies is now the starting point for the time prophecy that constitutes the major stimulus to urgency in the activity of Jehovah's Witnesses. What he's referring to is that before 1914, for three decades, the Watchtower had consistently predicted the winding up of all things in 1914. The words of Jesus Christ, truly I say to you that this generation will by no means pass away until all these things occur, are stated to have commenced applying with that year, 1914. Note the statements here underlined. This is from the October 8th, 1968, Awake, is it later than you think? This is the, how they put it in there. Jesus was obviously speaking about those who were old enough to witness with understanding what took place when the last days began. Jesus was saying that some of those persons who were alive at the appearance of the sign of the last days would still be alive when God brought this system to its end. Even if we presume that youngsters 15 years of age would be perceptive enough to realize the import of what happened in 1914, it would still make the youngest of this generation nearly 70 years old today. 1968. So the great majority of the generation to which Jesus was referring has already passed away in death. The remaining ones are approaching old age. And remember, Jesus said that the end of this wicked world would come before that generation passed away in death. This of itself tells us that the years left before the foretold end comes cannot be many. When the Awake magazine of October 8, 1968 discussed this 15 years ago at the, in the pre-1975 days, the stress was on how soon the generation of 1914 would be running out, how little time was left for that generation's lifespan. For any of Jehovah's Witnesses then to have suggested that things might go on for another 20 or 30 years would have been viewed as manifesting a poor attitude, not one indicative of strong faith. And I do recall that was indeed the consensus among the zealous ones, including the elders, in our congregations in Toronto. If you even discouraged the thought that we might be close to the end and expressed some degree of caution, you were told that you shouldn't spread that spirit among the brothers. When 1975 passed, Ray Franz goes on, the emphasis changed. Now the effort was made to show that the 1914 generation span was not as narrow as one might think, that it could stretch for quite a long ways yet. Thus, the October 1st, 1978 Watchtower spoke not of those witnessing with understanding what took place in 1914, but of those who were able to observe the events beginning that year. Mere observation is quite different from understanding. This could logically lower the minimum age limit of the ones forming this generation. Continuing this trend two years later, the Watchtower of October 15, 1980, cited an article in the U.S. News and World Report magazine, which suggested that 10 years of age could be the point at which events start creating a lasting impression on a person's memory. 
The article said that if such be true, then there are today more than 13 million Americans who have a recollection of World War I. I do recall at that same period a lot of brothers were speculating as to whether the fact that they were now somewhere between eight and 10,000 anointed left might be a factor here too. But that number was rapidly decreasing and that was also a proof. The end must be very close. Franz goes on, recollecting also allows for a more tender age than does understanding, suggested as being found among youngsters 15 years of age in the 1968 awake. Actually, World War I continued up until 1918, with American involvement beginning only in 1917. So, the suggested 10-year-old age, given in the news magazine, quoted, does not necessarily apply to 1914. Though different systems of measuring may gain a year or so here or there, the fact, that, the fact is that the generation of the 1914 period is shrinking with great rapidity, since the death rate is always highest among those of older age. The governing body is aware of this, for the matter came up for discussion a number of times. Again, he's writing, of course, in 1983, about men who he had served with and who had expressed opinions, we'll get into in a little while, that were, uh, to say the least, maverick from the standpoint of the rank and file Jehovah's Witness. Now, you might say, well, that being so, then why are we even speculating at the governing bodies? At the governing body level, surely speculation and men's opinions are but shifting sand. But of course, the, what was going on behind the scenes was not getting out to us who were in the front lines. It was certainty in the publications that the 1914 generation would bring the end. And you might say, well, why didn't they just go to <laughs> the Bible scholars of Christendom? F.F. F. Bruce, for instance, I should allude to here. If you haven't seen the video already we have on the channel about this generation looked at from the standpoint of a real Bible scholar, F.F. F. Bruce, you need to look at that video because Bruce and the commentators of Christendom have been very firm with what is called the preterist view. This has been the majority view among reputable Bible scholars for generations that when Jesus said this generation, he meant this, that is the generation of adults listening to him at that time. Anyway, back to Ray Friends. The issue arose during the June 7th, 1978 session of the body. Earlier factors led to this. The governing body member Albert Schroeder had distributed among the members a copy of a demographic report for the United States. The data indicated that less than 1% of the population who were out of their teens in 1914 were still alive in 1978. But I'm a more attention-getting factor had to do with statements Schroeder had made while visiting certain countries in Europe. Reports drifted back to Brooklyn that he was suggesting to others that the expression this generation, as used by Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 verse 34, applied to the generation of anointed ones. And that was as long as any of these were still living, such a generation would not have passed away. This was, of course, contrary to the organization's teaching and was unauthorized by the governing body. When the matter was brought up following Schroeder's return, his suggested interpretation was rejected and it was voted that a question from readers be run in a forthcoming issue of the Watchtower reaffirming the standard teaching regarding this generation. Interestingly, no rebuke or reproof whatsoever was directed to governing body member Schroeder for having advanced his unauthorized, contradictory view while in Europe. The issue emerged again in both the March 6th and November 14th, 1979 governing body sessions. Since attention was being focused on the subject, I made Xerox copies of the first 20 pages of the material sent in by a Swedish elder, which detailed the history of chronological speculation and revealed the actual source of the 2,520 year calculation and the 1914 date. Each member of the governing body received a copy. Aside from an incidental comment, they did not see fit to discuss the material. Of course, Franz is alluding here to the research of Carl Olaf Johnson in the Gentile Times Reconsidered. Johnson was also later disfellowshipped for his research. Lyman Swingle 
as head of the writing department, also on the governing body, was already familiar with this material. So Swingle had already looked at Johnson's research. He directed the body's attention to some of the dogmatic, insistent statements published in the 1922 Watchtowers, reading portions of these aloud to all the members. He said that he, did, that he had been too young in 1914, only about four years old at the time, to remember much about it, but that he did remember the discussions that took place in his home regarding 1925. That he also knew what had happened in 1975. He said he personally would not want to be misled regarding another date. In the course of that session, I pointed out that the Society's 607 BCE starting date had no <coughs> excuse me, no historical evidence whatsoever for support. And as for 1914 and the generation then living, my question was, if the organization's traditional teaching is valid, how can we possibly apply Jesus' accompanying words to the people living in 1914? He said, when you see all of these things, know that he is near at the doors. And as all these things start to occur, raise yourselves erect and lift your heads up, because your deliverance is getting near. The publications regularly stated that those words began applying from 1914 onward to those Christians living in 1914. But if so, then to whom among them could this apply? To those who were then 50 years old, but such ones, if still alive, would now be 115 years old. The 40-year-olds, they would be 105. Even the 30-year-olds would be 95, and those just out of their teens would already be 85 in 1979. They would have reached 90 if still living today. That is 1983. If then those stirring words lift up your heads because your deliverance is getting near, it's at the doors, indeed applied to people in 1914, and meant that they could hope to see the final wind-up, reasonably that exciting announcement would need to be qualified by saying, Yes, you may see it, that is, provided you are now quite young and live a very, very long life. As an example, I pointed to my father, who, born in, 19, in 1891, was just a young man of 23 in 1914. He lived not just three score and ten, but four score years, but, sorry, he lived not just four score years, but reached 86 years of age. But he had now been dead for two years and died without seeing the predicted things. So I asked the body, how meaningful the application of Jesus' words in Matthew 24, verses 33 and 34, could have been in 1914 if the only ones who could hope to see them fulfilled were children just in their teens or younger. No specific reply was given. Well, again, we could have saved ourselves all this speculation by just paying attention to a few of the scholars of Christendom, such as F.F. F. Bruce, who simply said that this generation is the, the generation in listening to Jesus, adults, not children. In the next segment, we'll talk about the reaction to the suggestions of Lyman Swingle and Ray Franz and a couple of others that we might, be, might want to be more cautious about clinging to the last generation scenario.